Skateboardludum, the hope will become a dying gasp. Oh. Chapter 12, Job. Then Job replied, Doubtless you are the only people who matter, and wisdom will die with you. But I have a mind as well as you. I am not inferior to you, who does not all the, know all these things. I have become a laughing stock to my friends. Though I called on God, and he answered, a mere laughing stock. Though righteous and blameless, those who are at ease have contempt for misfortune, as the fate of those whose feet are slipping. The tents of murderers are undisturbed, and those who provoke God are secure. Those God, those God has in his hand. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? And his hand is the life of every creature, and the breath of all mankind. Does not the ear test words, words? As the tongue tastes food, is not wisdom found among the aged? Does not long life bring understanding? To God belong wisdom and power. Counsel and understanding are his. What he tears down cannot be rebuilt. Those he imprisons cannot be released. If he holds back the waters, there is drought. If he lets them loose, they devastate the land. To him be long strength and insight. Both deceived and deceiver are his. He leads rulers away stripped and makes fools of judges. He takes off the shackles put on by kings and ties a loincloth around their waist. He leads priests away stripped and overthrows officials long established. He silences the lips of trusted advisers and takes away the discernment of elders. He pours contempt on nobles and disarms the mighty. He reveals the deep things of darkness and brings out of darkness into the light. He makes nations great and destroys them. He enlarges nations and disperses them. He deprives the leaders of the earth of their reason. He makes them wander in a trackless waste. They grope in darkness with no light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. Chapter 13 My eyes have seen all this. My ears have heard it and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you, but I desire to speak to the Almighty and to argue my case with God. You, however, smear me with lies. You are worthless physicians, all of you. If only you would be altogether silent for you. That would be wisdom. Hear now my argument. Listen to the pleas of my whips. Will you speak wickedly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for him? Will you show him partiality? Will you argue the case for God? Would it turn out well if he examined you? Could you deceive him as you might deceive a mortal? He would surely call you to account if you secretly showed partiality. Would not his splendor terrify you? Would you not the dread of him fall on you? Your maxims are proverbs of ashes. Your defenses are de your defenses are defenses of clay. Keep silent and let me speak. Then let then let come to me what may. Why do I put myself in jeopardy and take my life in my hands? Though he slay me, yet I, yet I will hope in him. I will surely defend my ways to his face, and day this day will turn out for my deliverance. For no godless person would dare come before him. Listen carefully to what I say, that my words ring, ring, ring in your ears. Now that I have prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Can anyone bring charges against me? If so, I'll be silent and die. Only grant me these two things. God, and then, I will not hide from you. 
withdraw your hand far from me, and stop frightening me with your terrors. Then summon me and I will answer, or let me speak and you reply to me. How many wrongs and sins have I committed? Show me my offense and my sin. Why do you hide your face and consider me your enemy? Will you torment a wind-blown leaf? Will you chase after dry shaft? For you write down bitter things against me and make me reap the sins of my youth. You fasten my seat in shackles. You keep close watch and all my paths by putting marks on the soles of my feet. So men waste away like something rotten, like a garment eaten by moths. Chapter 14. Mortals, born of woman, are a few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away, like fleeting showers they do not endure. Do you fix your eye on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can bring what is pure from the impure? No one. A person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months, and have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him, and let him alone, till he has put in his time like a hired laborer. At least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fall. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of water it will be bud, and put forth shoots like a plant. But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. As the water of a lake dries up, or a river bed becomes parched and dry, so he lies down and does not rise. Till the heavens are no more, people will not awake, or be roused from their sleep. If only you would hide me in the grave, and conceal me till your anger is past. If only you would set me a time and then remember me. If someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the creature your hands have made. Surely then you will count my steps, but not creep track of my sin. My offenses will be sealed up in a bag. You will cover over my sin. But as a mountain erodes and crumbles, and as a rock is moved from its place, as water wears away stones and torrents wash away the soil, so you destroy a person's hope. You overpower them once and for, once for all, and they are gone. You change their countenance and send them away. If their children are honored, they do not know it. If their offspring are brought low, they do not see it. They feel but the pain of their own bodies and mourn only for themselves. Eliphaz, chapter 15. The Eliphaz, the terror, replied, what a wise person had to with apne notions. Or fill their belly with the hot east wind. Would they argue with useless words, with speeches that have no value? But you even undermine piety and hinder devotion to God. Your sin prompts your mouth. You adopt the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. Are you the first man ever born? Were you brought forth before the hills? Do you listen in on God's counsel? Do you have a monopoly on wisdom? What do you what do you know that we do not what that we do not know? What insights do you have that we do not have? The gray haired and the aged are on our side. Men even older than your father. Are God's consolations not enough for you? Words spoken gently to you? Why has your heart carried you away? And why do your eyes flash? So that you vent your rage so that you vent your rage against God. And pour out such words from your mouth. What are mortals that they could be pure? Or those born of woman that they could be righteous? If God places no trust in his holy ones, if even the heavens are not pure in their eyes, how much less mortals who are vile and corrupt, who drink up evil like water? Listen to me and I will explain to you. Let me tell you what I have seen, what the wise have declared. 
hiding nothing was seen from their ancestors, to whom alone the land was given when no foreigners moved among them.